So So as I said, I'm grateful to be invited to be able to share with all of you today. And I'm happy to see familiar faces and new faces. And it's a joy to see the city case sowers persevering and growing in numbers. And when I was praying and preparing for this sharing, I shared this song that we heard or sang a while ago, which I think introduces us to the gospel this coming Sunday speaks about Jesus as the bread of life. You know, this passage is like the episode two or the continuation of the same gospel story we prayed about last Sunday. If you remember, it's about the multiplication of the loaves of bread. It's like watching the Netflix series, you know. It's the, an exciting series of good news. As we heard the passage read earlier, we see that after the miraculous uh, multiplication of the bread, all the people run to follow Jesus. And somehow this scenario is similar in our present times today. When the community pantry was started, it spread like wildfire. The people look and run where they could get the next bread thereafter. And it's the same experience of Jesus more than 2,000 years ago. He was the one who started that community pantry with the generosity of that one boy. And after that, the people also desperately looked for him when they saw that he did not only multiply the bread, may pasobra pang 12 baskets. So they followed him even going out of their way to the other side of the lake. And I ask why? Is it because they want to get more bread? Were they not fully satisfied with what they had? You know, when I was praying with this passage, I find it interesting that the people who followed Jesus after the multiplication of the bread were the same crowd who followed him seeing his miracles, his healing miracles. In the previous verse of the same chapter 6, verse 2, it's surprising because they are the same crowd who were following him. And surprisingly, after witnessing the two miracles, the two signs that Jesus made, they were still asking Jesus for more signs and miracles for them to believe him. They didn't get the real message behind these signs because their hearts were simply seeking for the bread and not the giver of the bread. How about us? When we come to prayer, what do we seek? Sometimes maybe we may be seeking for novelty in the preaching, for more learnings or insights, or for God to answer our prayer petitions. Or do we also look for signs and miracles? We are invited today to seek the giver of the bread, to encounter Jesus himself. You know, in every school of the word, when we gather to pray and break the word, it means it's a means in which our faith are being nourished and strengthened by him. Now let us reflect together the gospel today and allow the living word not only to nourish us but to transform us. If this school of the word is um, learning to pray with the word of God, maybe we could ask Jesus what he wants to tell us today, what he wants to teach us today. He wants to teach us one thing, no? as we contemplate the gospel now. When Jesus saw the crowd, um, who followed him, they were asking him no, an out-of-the-blue question. No, parang patay mali siya. Rabbi, when did you get here? What are you doing here? It's supposed to be Jesus who should ask them that. Why are you, what are you doing here? But they were asking Jesus, when did you get here? And Jesus knew what's in their heart and he said, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs, but because of the miracles that I performed 
because you ate the loaves and had your fill. What does Jesus want to tell them? And what does Jesus want to teach us? Don't just look for bread because you had your fill. Because there's more to bread than life. There's more to bread than life. There's an old quote. I don't know if you heard that song of Noel Gallagher, an English musician and songwriter, that says, I don't live to work. I work to live. And it's true. We don't live to work, but we work to live. Maybe you would say or ask me, of course, it's important for us to work in order to live. And it's true. We need to work in order to earn our daily bread, in order to earn our daily living, to sustain our family. But we don't live to work. We don't exist just only to work. What does it mean? We are not here to become slave of work or business simply to get bread or earn money. It means our life is not meant to revolve around work and money and business only. If life is based around your work or business and nothing else, then you lose your life and you lose everything. You know, before the pandemic struck, I remember there was a strong culture of workaholism and consumerism, and still now. People working for bread 24 hours a day. People who, mm, in, who are enslaved by work like seven days a week. And that's their life. That's why comes high rates of stress, anxiety, and mental health issues. Many people working hard, seeking, running after to get bread even at the cost of losing their health or relationship. But everything changed in a snap when pandemic erupted. COVID put into halt the whole world and the people realized that there's more to bread, that there's more to life than bread. We don't just live to work, but there's more to life than all these things. I remember one movie that I saw, I don't know if you saw it, is the movie Cast Away. Um, it's a survival drama movie. I don't know if you watch it in the year 2000 by Tom Hanks. He's a FedEx executive whose life revolves around work. At every second and minute counts to deliver his service. Till one day, the plane that he was flying crashed and he got stranded on a deserted, deserted tropical island. And there he fought to survive and er, learn that it, what it means to live life being locked down in that island with all the time in the world that he has. Being locked down, we also experience having all the time that we have. But he was living in that island alone. But this life turning event changed his life completely. Similarly, this pandemic we also experienced the same, being thrown into an island to be locked down, which limit us in a sense from our old, usual, ordinary, normal life. Now we are having our new normal. But this COVID virus, so small and invisible, yet powerful to make us realize that in a snap of a finger, we can lose everything that we work and strive hard for. It can be gone. It can perish. It can disappear in an instant. It make us humble to realize we are not God. We are not in control of the world, not even our life. And this uncontrollable situation, you know, even the new variant that is coming out, and we don't know until when this will end, somehow made us to stop to examine how we are living our life, where we are going, and what we are doing with our world. In this movie, Chuck, when he was rescued, it changed totally his perspective of life, of time, of relationship. He realized that there's more to life than work, and every little thing which he finds of no value and significance before, he started to be grateful of them, like the food, the water, the bed, 
the light, the fire, little things. As if every little thing matters as something precious and valuable. Maybe it's the same with us, isn't it? For many of us, it becomes a life-changing experience, which brought us to go back to see what are the essentials in life. What's more, what are those most valuable and important that we ha may have missed before? Simply as the fresh air we breathe freely without wearing masks, the open space, the face-to-face -face encounter, the presence, the meals together with friends anytime, the Eucharist, the sacraments. We realize that truly there's more to life that we miss and we come to value and appreciate now. If there's more to life than bread, the next question we are invited today is to ask ourselves, how do we want to invest our life? Do we want to invest it on something that perishes or something that lasts forever? In the gospel, Jesus reminds us, do not work for food that perishes, but for food that endures for eternal life. Work for food that lasts forever. I'm sure deep inside of us, we all want to work for something that lasts, isn't it? We always, we want to work for something or to do something that we will always be remembered by others, by the people around us. We want to work for something that we can leave behind as legacy no? to our children, to our grandchildren, to our family, to our community, and the people around us. That when we are gone, we will not be forgotten, isn't it? What are the things that last or endure forever? And come to think of it, let's see. When we look back in our life, what are those loving words spoken to us or kind gestures done to us by people around us, by our loved ones or friends? This is something that we never forget, isn't it? I'm sure many of us have lost loved ones in this time. I also lost my uncle this last year. And we remember good deeds, kind words, advice that was left to us and that marked us. And whatever help, small or big, done to us by someone when we needed it so much, we will keep and treasure that in our heart, isn't it? Or we are the one doing it to others. And the people will say to us, you know, I remember that day you helped me. Or you say that encouraging words to me. That are well remembered. No matter how years pass, the good and loving memories of people will always remain with us. Maybe we could ask ourselves, what could be that invitation of Jesus for me today? What he wants you to work for something that lasts in your personal life now? Or maybe for your family or your circle of friends, or your community. You know, the song of Corinne May, I don't know if you know that song entitled 24 Hours. It's beautiful, that song in one line, it says, if I only have 24 hours to live, what would I say? What will I do? Now we are given 24 hours or more years to come to create happy memories with our loved ones, this present moment, with people around us. We are invited to build happy memories and leave behind good memories and transmit what could be lasting to the people around us. As parents to your children, between couples, remember one couple's fighting so hard for the relationship and they commit and make an option to have weekly dates without the kids just to save and make strong their relationship. Or the, or the grandparents to your grandchildren. 
or to your siblings, maybe it's a call to forgive, to reconcile. How to build community and relationship, giving quality time with one another. How would you like to invest your life? Do you want to invest it on something that perish or something that lasts forever? Experience, I would like to share with you my experience uh, before I became a missionary. I worked for eight years in the field of sales and marketing in an IT industry. So I was uh, a goal-driven person. So I set the goal and I make sure that I reach that goal to reach the, lamp, the, the to climb the ladder of success. And at the young age of 24, I was there right, at the peak of my career. And I was investing my life, dedicating my life, working for bread, right? working for bread, um, sales, profit, quota, target, position, title, money, everything in order to reach that ladder of success. Until one time, I had a life-changing experience when I first joined an Easter retreat in Tagaytay in the year 97. And that life-changing experience marked me, uh, especially that testimony of one of our lay disciples, her name is Angie. She gave testimony in one of the stations of the cross. And it struck me because I identified myself so much with her. She was already at the peak of her career, and that's where I wanted to be. And she was saying to us that message that there's more to life than success. There's more to life than success. And the fullness of life can only be found in Jesus. And for me, it struck me a lot. He said in the gospel, Mark 6, For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world, yet loses his soul, loses his life? I said, I'm, I was 24 then. I said, I don't want to waste the rest of my years simply. Uh, working for something, at the end, I lose my soul. I lose my life. So it was a turning point in my life to seek God, to seek Jesus as the true bread of my life. And what was um, shocking for me also after that is that same person, Angie, after the Holy Week, she had a checkup uh, because she was having fever. She had a checkup and it, she was diagnosed at that instant with a stage four cancer, leukemia. And after two months, she died. For me, I was so shocked, we were all shocked, because I was so touched because I knew that last testimony that she gave was meant for me. She gave her life for me, that I may receive eternal life. And I will be over forever grateful for her. And that marked me to ask myself the big question. If I only have one life and my life is short, how would I like to invest it? I don't want to invest it on something that passes away, but something that lasts forever, something that endures forever, that is to give eternal life to others. Maybe it's also this moment I invite you, you could ask yourself, at this stage of your life, at this point in your life, maybe some of you are at the peak of your career, the peak of your life, some in the midlife and also nearing the midlife. Greetings to my classmate. I just saw his greeting, Lenny. He was my classmate before. We're in the midlife. Some are in the peak and beyond. No? They call it teenagers, senior agers, no? not teenagers, teenagers. At this point in your life, how do you want to invest the remaining years of your life? Do you want to invest it according to the purpose and plan that God has for you? Do you want to live it with meaning, with purpose? And it's the same question in the gospel today. What is the work of God that he wants to accomplish in your life? This is the, the question of the eyes, the, the question of the people in the gospel. What can we do? To accomplish the works of God. And Jesus answered, This is the work of God that you believe in the one he sent. 
all the miracles, signs that Jesus did were intended to bring people to believe in the one whom he sent. For them to seek and believe in the giver of the bread. In the first reading in the Exodus, the people of Israel were complaining of hunger in the desert. Moses gave them the manna from heaven, but in the New Testament, Jesus is the one sent by the Father, someone greater than Moses. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. Jesus offers himself as the true bread to give life to the world. I am the true bread. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Whoever comes to me will be satisfied and will not go empty-handed because you will have your fear. Jesus invited us in the soul this morning to come to him as our true friend. Why do you come? Why do you come and persevere in this weekly prayer so? I'm sure it's not for the missioneros because as missionaries, we come and go. But as Christians and followers of Christ, as disciples, we seek only Jesus as the true bread of life. I believe you faithfully come for prayer because personally, you experience how the living word of God nourishes your hope and faith, especially in the midst of pandemic. Which, what gives you strength and courage to pass through trials and challenges in your life, in your family. The word of God as the living bread that satisfies and fills your deep hunger. This unconditional love of God that quench your deep thirst for love. You've encountered a living God, a personal God, and tasted this bread which has changed your life and your family. And it's true, once we've tasted this true bread of life, our life can never be the same again. Isn't it? When we know him and believe in him, we cannot be moved but to partake in his same mission of giving eternal life to many. When we pray and come to him, he opens our eyes to be more sensitive to the needs of the many people around us, both materially and spiritually. We cannot live our life anymore in merely temporal things but to live for what is essential in life. Love, relationship, family bonding, friendship, sharing of life. To think and care for others as our brothers and sisters. Maybe some of you experience the joy and fulfillment of living your mission in your own family, in your workplace in collaborating with the Verbum Day mission of evangelization in Pansol and here in Pasi, with the friends of Verbum Day and the feeding program that we have, or inviting people to join the School of the Word to come to know Jesus, of reaching out to many people God placed in your way. Isn't there a more, an experience of more joy and fulfillment when you slowly find a deeper meaning and purpose in your life, when you share your five loaves in order to help build a better society, a better world, when you realize that collaborating in the mission, you can be part of the solution and answer in front of the crisis we face as a nation or as a humanity. When I came back from Taiwan last year, and I live, started to live here in Pasig in our apostolate center. I'm living with the, one of the new missionaries in the formation of our new missionaries, but also in apostolate center here. You know, I'm evangelized by the people in our apostolate who seek not only for the bread or food, food packs they receive uh, monthly because they see that there's more to life than bread. They know and they see that behind 
those monthly food pack they receive is the manifestation of the goodness and providence of God to them. Who doesn't forget them to the generosity of many people who help them, especially in this time of pandemic. And they too are moved to share and give their part. They are not mere passive recipients, but they joyfully also give their part to help. You know, one testimony of young, one young boy here, one of our youth here, he was interviewed in the uh, Radio Veritas here in Pasti. And she was, he was joyfully giving testimony of being able to share his five loaves in his own little way. That I was like one of the 12 apostles. We help repack and distribute the five loaves. It doesn't come from us. Other people give it. But we put our part and our time and our availability to repack it and distribute it to others, to the multitude. And for him, he was sharing it with so much joy. It's the same with other mothers who come here to help in repacking the goods for others. And it's too what St. But St. John Paul II said, Nobody is so poor that he has nothing to give. And nobody is so rich that he has nothing to receive. Even the poorest of us have something to give to others. Like the young boy, the little boy in the passage we read last week. It's the generosity from the heart to give whatever five loaves or bread that we have to feed others. And our charisma and mission is to form disciples who in turn can make other disciples to follow Christ and to partake in the same mission, to give bread of life to others, to give eternal life to others. Now, we can have this moment of silence to pray, to encounter the living bread, the true bread, who is Jesus himself. Allow his word to speak to you. Allow his word to speak to us. And to invite us to look and examine our life, how we are living our life. If there's more to life than bread, how we would like to invest it. Invest it for what is eternal, for what lasts forever. There's a reflection guide that may help us also in our time of prayer. 